Hello everyone. Welcome to Groundwater Hydrology and Management, Week 9, Lecture 4. In this week, we have been looking at data for stratification of the aquifer, basically looking at how layerings happen, what data do you collect, and how to manage it. We've looked at, in the last class, how manually we can connect the layers and make a stratigraphy or also use softwares that can be done. Basically given you the names of the software which you are welcome to use. It is important to now know where to get the data to input into the software. So we started by defining <coughs> where and how to get the bore logs the stratigraphy data, the layering data. <coughs> and then we looked at where and how you can make connections between the layers, thereby making a fence diagram and stratification aquifers. Then we looked at how to collect data in and put it into a model and what type of models are available. These are field data. So how do you use someone else's data or like government's data, how do you use? That is what we'll be looking at in the first part of today's lecture. So this website <coughs> you see here, post most of the water related data. It is an Indian government data. And most of the data here or all of the data here are owned by government of India and or people who have added data to the database. So the link is given here. You're welcome to uh, go to the link and see how these websites behave. In the next class, I will go through some of these websites. Today, I would like to stress on how this website is created and what data you can take. <clears throat> here, when you go into this uh, India WRIS website, along with the Litholog full link, I've given you the link in the slide, <coughs> you'll be taken to this page. And then you can zoom in and zoom out and click on the locations. Depending on your internet speed, it will take time. Okay, so don't um, push the model. Don't uh, worry if it is taking too long because there's a lot of data and it might take time. Once you have the data, you can download and use it in the software that I mentioned. You will need to create an account to download the data. So please go to this website in today's lecture and slowly start downloading the data. Before that, start the account and play with the website as in what is each button mean. So that you'll be ready in the next lecture when I teach you will also have an account to look at and practice within um, or how I do. Okay. So if you go to this website with the lithologue, I'll just first tell about what is the lithologue data. You will be shown a map, a map of some red points. <coughs> the red locations are where the sample has been taken, the bore log has been taken the borehole has been made. When you click it, it will be blinking for some time and then you'll get this litholog. So now you can see how many layers are there in this uh, litholog. Dominant layers, only two, which is your non-aquifer alluvium shale and then your unconsolidated sediments, quaternary recent. So almost they give you an age and also tell you uh, what kind of um, aquifer it is, okay? More details on that could be just, you can search for the uh, names that they're given and you will get it. Since this is not a geology course, I won't jump into all the major um, sediments and quaternary, those kind of things. But for now, we can understand that <clears throat> it is two distinct layers. And then there is a unconsolidated layer and a 
a non aquifer see the non aquifer could be labeled as different terms in different um, books but here you could see the water bearing or where the water is storing in the ground water pore spaces is given by the blue color the dashed line is called the static water level at the time of drilling what okay so when they drilled you can see the well location is sikandarpur kampu um, uh, well id is given state madhya pradesh district gwalior when they drilled it the first water they hit which is called the static water because it is called static because it is not being pumped so it is a stable static water you drill the hole and then the first time you hit it <coughs> you record the water level i hope you remember this is what i taught in the previous uh, two lectures back where you make a sheet and then by drilling you can know where the water level is you record the water level so this is the first uh, water and the only water here because there's no other line which shows uh, an impervious layer and water and it is the dashed line as a static water table water level okay so once they put it at the time of pumping that is the uh, level and what is it it's almost around 10 meters 10 meters below the surface they got water so this is the meters and this is the litholog okay there are some instructions here on how to use the website uh, uh, and because it's a new addition to the website and then you have on this side the map where the location is it says exploratory well observation well piezometer well others okay exploration as i said <coughs> it is not for water level monitoring it is just to take the lithologs so these are the wells by cgwb or by the um, state government where they have made the well you put it in take the water level take the um, um, a type of material and that's it you go ahead to the next location the observation well is a well where the water level is being monitored that's why it's in blue color piezometer well is a well which has a piezometer it's like a meter which they put inside the well it monitors the ground water every day or month depending on the time interval whereas your observation well they monitor four times in a year so now you see the three different types of wells where exploration is just for the logs litholog what kind of rock what kind of aquifer observation well is for the water levels which is done by cgwb mostly for four times a year and then your piezometer well which is having an instrument at the deep aquifer so if you ask me what is the deep aquifer well then it will be the piezometer well because you cannot put a meter in and then take the level uh, uh, every four months it's too deep so what they do they put a transmitter or a data data log which logs the data they put it inside and then they take it every year or every 2 3 years once because the battery life is large they take it and then download the data and put it back in they can also make uh, a system where it relays the data but depending on the depth uh, it may may not relay the data you have to take it out put it uh, in your system to download the data and then put it back in So what you see here is one litholog data. So the idea is you collect more and then make the stratigraphy using the handmade model which I showed in class or the softwares. When you take it, it will be like an Excel sheet or a text sheet where how you would like to take. But you can also note it down in pen and paper, right? It is what it says from zero to ten uh, 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 around. Uh, One meter, you have this very thin soil that is our top soil, and then you have um, the blue layer uh, from two two meters to thirty uh, meters, and then the fifty meters line. There's one other one, and after that, everything is the non-aquifer. So with this, uh, we would finish the aquifer uh, litholog data and how you use the data. but be uh, careful on understanding the static level it is not the water level actual because it is not being pumped whereas most of these observation wells 
record what is being pumped. Okay, so it will be fluctuating a lot, whereas this well, it won't fluctuate depending on the aquifer. If it is an alluvial aquifer, it will it will uh, fluctuate. <coughs> but if it is a normal um, hard rock aquifer, it won't fluctuate much because it is an observation well, it is kind of shielded away. Okay, so now we finished the lithologue, the stratigraphy, etc. But now we're going to jump into kind of wrapping up this course. Uh, we need to understand what other data is needed, okay, and where is it available. That is what we'll be looking at in the next two, three lectures. What other data is needed for understanding groundwater and where to get it. So if you look at this uh, diagram, you could see that uh, there is multiple data sets that are, you need to understand groundwater, starting from your uh, roadmap um, of where the location is, and then the land use, land cover. How is the land uh, covered uh, in terms of um, the green, um, you know, land? Is it like crops and etc.? And then you have your uh, fence diagram, basically a bore log, how the uh, log is made. Uh, and then you have your raw material. I'm going from bottom to up just to show all the layers, okay? Because when you start, this is the easiest to get. You can easily get the uh, major material of the um, rock because that is already available for us, right? Whereas if you go down further and further, you have different, different data sets. So let's look at it uh, as hierarchy. Um, the first and foremost thing is the groundwater level. You need groundwater level to understand the dynamics, how it's being pumped and how the water level fluctuates. For that, there is multiple agencies that collect data. We'll get to those agencies soon. Then we need the groundwater properties which is starting from the aquifer properties. Do we have the layering? How many layers are there and what are the layers? Do we have the lineaments or the geological um, uncertain areas uh, and lines where water would just pass through? So these are more geological terms, uh, which actually help to quantify the aquifer thickness and or how much water is stored in the aquifer. Then you need your soil type and geology, which is very important. All these data, mostly you will get at a large scale. It is up to you to kind of focus it down to your study and find more data from local environments. Hydroclimate and rainfall, uh, which is including your rainfall, temperature, humidity, wind speed, all these climatic parameters which help to explain the hydrology is very important. Those you can get from many sources because th these are more easier to get. There's a lot of climate models, global circulation models, and or a lot of data sets from satellites that can easily capture the rainfall, temperature, and other things. The most difficult of this would be your underground parameters including your stratification layers, how many layers are there, and most important, your groundwater. So these are all on the supply side, how much water comes, how much water is stored, and how much water is available for your groundwater use. Okay? These are called your supply side in your budgets, water budgets. Remember the water budgets? We discussed that. What is more important along with the supply side, how much water groundwater I have, is your demand estimates. Because your supply is shrinking because someone is taking the water out. It's not just shrinking because water converts to base flow and then goes into the rivers. It is shrinking because or coming down, the groundwater level is coming down because there is a lot of demand. And the demand can be estimated using your land use, land cover, because if I know there is a lot of agriculture, if there is a lot of uh, forest and trees, plants, 
there is some water movement, some water being taken up, right? So that you can find out using the land use land cover data. The pumping scenarios gives how much water is being pumped out of the aquifer. Basically, you would uh, ask for metering, metering of pumps, and or uh, some data that gives you how much water has been pumped. For example, your irrigation database. If you know how much crops are grown in an area and you know the per crop water requirement, you could easily calculate the pumping volume. So this is a demand that has been occurred. You need to take that, okay? So let's write the, um, the equation uh, here quickly. You have del S, right? Or change uh, in storage, or you want groundwater storage equal to your supply minus demand. This is the net groundwater available, the groundwater storage. How much is available? Is nothing but your supply versus minus demand with, uh, according to your um, hydrological water balance that I explained earlier in the first first classes. And the supply is given by these parameters, which is rainfall plus um, Q in, Q out plus your G, water recharge, right? And then you have a minus of ET. ET is your evapotranspiration how much water is lost during the pumping uh, and your pumping scenarios minus actually a bracket let's say this is supply minus demand is your plus domestic and So you could see how this water balance has evolved, which is nothing but your GWS storage is your supply minus demand. So you need to get all the supply data intact and then subtract it from the demand to get this data. Where do you get the land use land cover? Again, you have satellites and other things that you can get data. I will actually present this in the next week. We'll go each bullet and then we'll collect the data. Okay. And we'll establish a conceptual model to show how this groundwater uh, depletion scenario is happening. Then we look at pumping scenarios. How do you estimate a pumping scenario? And then we also compare the domestic versus industrial use. Domestic, you can estimate using your population and then the LPCD rate, how much water they would consume, uh, and your industrial use is very, very difficult to estimate. We don't know how much uh, they use. Agriculture is the biggest demand. Um, however, we can easily estimate it using your satellites and other um, data that is available. Good, so moving on. Then we have groundwater data, which is coming from level data. Where do you get the groundwater level data and all these renewments and everything? You get it from government bodies, farmers, NGOs, and industries. Okay, so the industries um, would uh, be inclusive of your um, water industries and um, your um, agencies that supply water, uh, bottling industries, they might have some groundwater data, okay, because they consume a lot of groundwater, but mostly your government bodies have a lot of these data, agencies I'm saying, as followed by your farmers, which because farmers uh, eventually should have, but it's expensive and they're kind of not um, sure if they'll be billed for water, so they don't monitor the groundwater, okay? So farmers data is available and NGOs are the people who work on the ground with the farmers, they have some data. The central government agencies include, so I'm gonna break which are these agencies that I'm talking about. Uh, the government agencies include Central Groundwater Board, which is the, uh, the 
instituted government body by India to monitor groundwaters across India. Okay, they are the uh, central body under the Ministry of Jal Shakti, Department of Water Resources and River Development and Ganga Regeneration Government of India with an office in Delhi. Almost every year, they would release a book like this called the Groundwater Yearbook in India. And it will have every single state mapped with the water level fluctuation. And most of the data is shown as a net value. For example, for one year, what is the net? If you want the actual data, I will show you how to get the actual data in the coming classes. The next board, which is important, is the Central Pollution Control Board, also called as CPCB. See, the CPCB is mandated to control pollution and monitor the pollution, right? Because, uh, as the name suggests, it is for controlling. How do you control without monitoring? So that is why they have a lot of monitoring networks. So when they monitor the surface pollution, land pollution, they eventually have to monitor the groundwater for pollution because it can move inside. And that is why they will also have some records, at least water quality only they do. So they will have good lab facilities where you can collect the data and put it. Eventually they have also had some groundwater data, which you could all take it up from this website that I will be showing in the next class called WRIS website. Then you have the state agencies. For example, the Public Works Department in Tamil Nadu, the UP government, um, government's groundwater board, UPGW, and SWID. Okay, so all these boards and different agencies support with a budget to monitor groundwater. They have a capacity. For example, scientists uh, in Central Groundwater Board um, and consultants that work across with these borders. They monitor the data, they write reports and books, and it is published. Like, for example, this book is published. Open source, anyone can take it and read it. Initially, the data was not available for free. Uh, you had to pay for the data. Nowadays, most of the data is available. For free. There are some sensitive data you cannot take. So they will label it saying, yes, we have a, a monitoring well, but we will not give the data. It is sensitive data. And along with this, there are other agencies that I have given you here on the bottom, which have a lot of groundwater data, UN, IGR, RAC, uh, and also your uh, other international bodies that are interested in groundwater conservation in India, they also collect some data, which uh, is available um, through their different websites and portals. So what has the government of India done for this? all this data that I mentioned is they have created a web page or an application called Groundwater Estimation and Management System. So this was developed for helping to understand groundwater with the data they have, and also some advisories using their advisory team, which is made up of eminent people and industries across the world. For example, the UN Delft. It is a well-developed standardized national info information system database the link is given here on the top. You could see um, if you zoom in to the slide, you can see it here, or just type GEMS uh, Groundwater uh, India, you'll get it. And it has given you all the instructions on how to um, download, how to set it up, FAQs, etc. So this data is all hosted into this uh, information system. But running this, as I, as I said, there are multiple systems. Running this would take its own learning curve. 
and because we just have uh, three more weeks, I'll be focusing on just collecting the data for you. There are YouTube tutorials on how to use these um, websites. Please go and check it on YouTube. You will learn how to use it. What Jump has is a lot of data banks and databases. Okay. Which is needed for hosting the data. See, not every state government would have a big server and store all the data. So it is better that the government India was having this website. And from the website, they collected all the data that they need and kept it in a data bank and database, which is available for free for public. It improves the quality of data and processing capabilities. Because you, your computer or your uh, hardware may not be suitable for collecting and running these samples. So they have given you an information system, which can help in making these trend estimates, the, the degree of deviation from groundwater, static line, and your de depletion scenario, all these things you can take. It is aimed at promoting free exchange of data among the users of various agencies. When I say various agencies, it includes the government and public private also, but most importantly, between the government agencies like agriculture, irrigation, forests, climate change, Jal Shakti mission, domestic uh, water uh, demand, uh, water ministry, Ganges rejuvenation, Jal Jeevan, all these, all these missions can have different data and now they have one common place where they can put the data and encourage exchange of data among the users. It was done by, as I said, uh, MS uh, Tata Infotech Limited, um, where Tata has put a lot of their staff on government projects for uh, building these infrastructures, uh, IT infrastructures, I mean and domain specific knowledge. See, the IT has built a good IT system where if you put data, the recommendations can come. However, you also need some technical background, which is given by the Central Groundwater Board, key scientist, state groundwater agencies like your PWD, DHV Delft consultants. These are consultants from Netherlands and the National Informatics Center, which is more on GIS and data analytics. So all these work well together as a system and you can download and use it. All the instructions are given in this website. Moving on from next class on, we would go into each and every part of the groundwater. So if you see here in the WRIS website, which I shared um, in the lithologue also, I will be going through each of these bullets to show what it happens and how the data is being shown. Because some uh, students may not get it when they open it. It may not open properly. You may close it and say it's not opening. So there is a process on how to do it. I will lively show it on this um, platform so that you could use it for your information. Make sure to create a link so that you can download and use the data. Thank you. I will see you in the next class.